Hey guys, the footage you're about to see is done by a professional. I've been doing this for over 25 years. This footage is for entertainment value only. Please do not try this at home. So, you want to shoot fast, huh? <laughs> I'm finally waking up today. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, well, how do I get to the next level? Well. You get to the next level by being the first one on the range and the last one to leave. Hi, I'm Jerry Mitchellark and I'd like to introduce you to the new Shoot Fast series. Uh, this is going to be at Mitchellark.com and what we were going to do is take different firearms and just see how fast we can shoot them. So it would seem only natural that the first segment would be on revolver shooting. I'm probably known more for my revolver shooting than any other aspect of what I do professionally. Uh, I've shot for Smith & Wesson now close for, 20, for 25 years, so I also hold five world records. I've won 20 consecutive international revolver championships, so, and I've probably have 24 uh, USPSA titles and a couple of world IPSC titles, so when it comes to revolvers, this is pretty much what I'm known for, uh, but I'm also known as a good three-gun competitor, so that's going to be something to look for in the future. To give you an idea of what we do professionally and how we win and lose tournaments, uh, this is a professional grade timer. These little instruments record shooting events down to a hundredth of a second. So when we go out to the range and we do work and we practice, uh, we live and die by these timers. So as we go through the Shoot Fast series, you see a lot of professional timers like this. Uh, there again, they're accurate to a hundredth of a second. They're easy to use. You can go back and actually see what you did per shot. So you can set it on a part time where it would beep and then it would beep again at any time you'd want it to. You set it for different intervals or you can just put it on a random start. You can put it on an actual delay start to your specifications. A lot of times a guy put them on like a one and a half second, get the ready position, it'll beep and you go ahead and you draw and you make your shot. And with a timer like this, you can go back and actually review everything that you did from the first shot to the last shot to the sixth shot to your reloads. So, uh, you can go back and cut through everything that you that you did on a performance and break it down to a hundredth of a second, which is really critical for a speed shooter to know exactly where he is a, as a as a professional. So uh, really, no excuse not to do well when you have a timer like this. We also have some Hornady ammunition today. Uh, bought it through cheaper than dirt. Uh, this is some 140 grain, 357 Magnum flex tip. Uh, works really great. Uh, for what it's made for, 357 Magnum. So later on in the day, we'll be burning some of this stuff up. So we're going to go right into the revolvers and give you an idea of what they are. What I have in front of you here today is the Smith & Wesson end frame 38 caliber revolvers. And I'll give you some close-ups and some details of exactly what they are and what to look for when you look at these particular revolvers. So I'll start with one that's actually made from pieces. This is a scandium frame. It's a 327. It started life as a 327 in 38 special 357 Magnum. What I did to it, I put a 38 super cylinder. I had Irv Stone at Barstow Barrel do some of his uh, 356 diameter barrels and I also had it magnaported. I had it quadruported here on the front of the barrel. Uh, I shoot steel challenge with it so I wanted the gun to be relatively lightweight but be also extremely fast. So the way it's set up here with the, with the, with the alloy frame and the little bit of weight on the front on this stainless steel shroud, the balance point is a little bit forward so it, uh, it follows through on target really nice. And it's an 8 shot 38 Super. It uses a moon clip. And what's really neat about a moon clip and a revolver is all the ammunition is affixed in a package. So when you load the cylinder and you go to unload you have one little tidy package and it makes for a very consistent speed load. So, I also have a vortex optic on the top. This is a six minute dot. Uh, you can tell by the size, it's relatively lightweight. It's a real high quality red dot sight. Uh, I have a Weaver scope base on it. So, pretty much as you see it here, uh, it's ready to rock. I've got a, a narrow serrated trigger. This, these are what I uh, put on my JM series 625 revolvers. It has a trigger stop. I bob the hammer. I never shoot it single action anyway, so it's got a good action job on it. Uh, I've shot a lot of ammunition through this one. I used it at the last couple of steel challenges and it's just been really top of the line. I'm really 
happy with the Barstow Barrel Liner. Uh, the gun shoots extremely well, so uh, it's everything you can expect out of a speed gun. Just really nice all-around revolver. The other revolver I have here is a Performance Center, and it's a Model 627. It's also an end frame. It's in 38 357 Magnum. It's also cut for a moon clip. The back of the cylinder, the way it's designed, you can shoot it with the moon clip or without. So it makes the platform very versatile in the aspect of I do not have to clip every single round of ammunition. So if I just want to go out and practice, I have 500 rounds loose in an ammo can or something, I can just dump them in a cylinder and take them out. But if I want the fast speed load ability, I can clip them into a moon clip. And there I have, again, a package of ammunition that goes in and out of the revolver relatively quick. So you have it both ways here with the rimmed cartridge. Uh, also have a bobbed hammer on it. This is a stainless steel gun start to finish. It's their V-Comp series. The only thing I did different to, this, to the stock V-Comp, I had this one fitted with a titanium cylinder. Uh, this was one of my i guns a few years ago. Uh, I have an aim point sight on it. Also quad reported. That's a pretty much a feature of all my competition guns for the last six or eight years. I try to incorporate the magnet port into most everything that I do. It's a very easy way to, to add controllability to a gun or a revolver or a handgun or a rifle without distracting for this the way it fits in a holster or just about anything else. So it's just a good way of controlling recoil. It's economical, it's fast, it doesn't hurt the accuracy at all. So this is pretty much an end frame stainless stainless steel stock 627. So there you have it guys. We have two good Revolver is just waiting to race, so let's take them out to the range and just see how fast they are. Okay, I've got my 327 on. We're going to step back to seven yards and do a build drill, which means I'll start from the surrender on the timer, draw and shoot six rounds on that steel target, see how fast we can do it. time 165 for the total for six rounds on target split times we're running 18 17 16 17 16 right about 16 5 17 hundredths of a second total time was 165 react and draw and shoot six right six rounds on target not bad okay guys that wasn't too bad but we're gonna make it a little bit harder we're gonna go strong hand only out of the holster six rounds on target and let's see what we can do that in. All right, strong hand only from the holster, six rounds. Here we go. Not too bad. <laughs> 171. First shot of 84, so not too bad. Now guys, that's pretty hot. I'm gonna have to brag on that a little bit. Let's take a look at that. Got an 18, a 16, an 18, a 17, a 14. Oh, yeah, that was nice. That was pretty. That was pretty good. I'm gonna make it a little bit harder. Okay, we're gonna make this a little bit harder. We're gonna do some more one-handed shooting, but this time I'm gonna do it weak hand, unsupported. So I'm gonna draw up my strong hand, do a transfer, and go ahead and make the extension and pop that thing six times as fast as we can. Let's let's see what that are. Let's see what that looks like. Here we go. All right, there we go, guys. 239. 143 first shot. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to put the revolver upside down, pull the trigger with the little finger on the strong hand and just see how fast we can do that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and load it up, use the little finger on the strong hand, revolver upside down. Let's see what kind of split times we can hit. Alright, we got six on steel. Let's see what we got. We had about 25, 25, 25. A matter of fact, 
they're all at 25 so I guess my little finger pegs out at just about 25 splits so there you have it upside down okay we're gonna take this to the next level we're at seven yards I'm gonna go ahead and draw a blindfold and put six on that piece of steel so Kay is gonna come around and blindfold me come on let's make it happen All right. Go. Here we go. There it is. Six in the middle. Total time, 178. Pretty good. Okay, we're going to do this shot again. I'm going to go ahead and let Kay blindfold me, let the cameraman come on, come on around and give you a perspective of that uh, I truly am blindfolded, so, all right, all right, Kay. All right, go. Here we go. All right, guys. There it is, six on one, 176. So either I'm very lucky twice in a row or I know what I'm doing, so figure it out. <laughs> We've got a plate rack down range. There's a lot of good information, a lot of good training you can do on a plate rack. I'm gonna take the first few runs left to right and see where we live. All right, total time. React and draw, left to right. Here we go. Oh, now that was pretty good. Let's take a look at total time. 216, first shot of 109. Not a stellar run, but a good solid run. Let's do it again. Left to right. Here we go. All right. Left to right. Here we go. <laughs> All right, left to right. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at 209. So I'm living at about a 209 total. Not bad, I'll take it any, any, any day in a match. Let's make it a little bit harder, go right to left. For a right-handed guy, it's a lot harder to do that. So let's take it the opposite direction. See where we are there. As you can see, it's considerably a bit harder after 220, so it slowed me down a little bit. Now we're going to start playing a few games here. We're going to shoot the far left target, go to the far right target, go to the far left, go to the far right. A lot of gun, a, a lot of gun motion for a little bit of work. It really teaches your eye coordination and how to start and stop. So you have to really pay attention to where you're going, where you've been. So far left, far right, far left, far right, until we finish with the with the plate rack. All right. As you can see, that's a lot of a lot of work on a short span of targets. Good start and stopping drills. But we're gonna do something different. We're gonna shoot a dual entry next. Uh, what that means for the shooter is I really need to keep my firearm in line when I come straight up and down. I have my gun motions, my left and my right hand, have to be synchronized to the aspect of when I'm doing a presentation to the target to stay center without a lot of work. So plate rack you work on your knees dueling tree you work on your arms pretty much exactly 100 percent so i'm going to go ahead and shoot this tree a couple of times and see what it looks like here we go i guess i moved my arms pretty good because it went pretty slick uh that was a pretty good run. Let's look at the total time here. We were running about 23, 21, 19 splits. So straight up and down, good arm motion, control, kept it right in the center of the targets. Okay, we took the dueling tree and we put every other target out. Makes it a lot harder. I'm working on a 45 degree angle. 
can't travel with my arms straight up. I have to really think about my gun motions, keep the trigger in cycle, and see how fast we can run it on a 45 degree angle. All right, here we go. Mm, that would have been a smoker. That was real close, guys. I got carried away on my fifth shot. I was looking at the sixth target before I finished the trigger pull. Sucker punched me. So we're going to set it up again. I know I can do it better this time. Okay, we got the dueling tree set up again. What I have to watch is a shooter here. There's a lot of action going on. I can't look back. I got to look forward. And uh, it's very distracting. So we're going to run it again. It's pretty fun setup right here. Let's do it again. Here we go. Sucker punched me again. <laughs> okay, guys, we got to try it one more time. This is actually kind of fun. Where I'm losing out right here is that I'm actually starting to look back at where I've been. And once you do that, the, the targets took over the, the shooting position. So I'm going to try to stay focused. Here we go. Ah, now that time, I didn't let the target distract me. It was a lot better performance. It was clean. It was six rounds. Total time of 2.4 seconds. So, a little bit harder to shoot in a plate rack, a little bit different gun motion, but it's still a fun day on the range. We're going to finish up a great day on the range with some really, truly great ammunition also. This is some Hornady. It's 140 grain flex tip 357 Magnum. I've got my volunteer two liter bottles down range. I've got a 627 Smith & Wesson. We're going to load them up and see what it does to a two-liter bottle. All right, guys. Here we go on the timer. Here we go. <laughs> now if that doesn't get you excited, you're just not a gun person. So there you have it, 627 Hornady ammo. Does pretty good. So what do you think guys? It was a pretty good day on the range. Uh, what you have to realize is most of this shooting was done cold. If I'd have had a chance to warm up a couple hundred rounds, it might have looked a little bit better. So what we did was actual shooting cold, and that's the way you are as a, as a professional. So as you can tell, the Hornady ammo worked really good. The timer, the revolvers, of course, were Cracker Jack. Uh, can't really say enough good about Smith & Wesson products. Uh, I've shot them for 25 years, and uh, they're never lacking for speed. They're always waiting on me. So. Great guns, great day on the range, and uh, I'd like to welcome you to subscribe to Mitchellek.com. The next Shoot Fast episode is going to be the M1 Garand, which should be uh, pretty exciting.